Hello everybody, my name is Ande and welcome to another super cool reaction video. Today this is going to be all about, uh, well if you can look uh, all around me, it's going to be uh, unrelated to who is here right now, which is Pomni down there, Pomni flush on my head, and Mad Pat right next to me. So today we're going to be reacting to film theory, the how the amazing digital circus is literally hell. So judging from the title and... Well, from the thumbnail, really, uh, li look, listen, I remember way back when, you know, people be watching Cartoon Network, people be watching Nickelodeon, and one show in particular I heard, which was Ed and Eddie, you know, the f funny show, great show, uh, I'm gonna, this sounds unrelated, but I'm gonna get to it, uh, yeah, so that show was wacky, all that, all the characters were fun, and had a great ending, even though, you know. If the creator ever came back someday and said, hey, what if we make uh, another season? I would be totally fine with it. You know, just with a different status quo. Like, I think it would be, that would be great. I think they could do it, like, you know. And not even, like, a reboot kind of thing. Kind of like, you know, they bring everyone back for the original. They make sure to get their A-OK -okay on this. And they check it through multiple, multiple people and even the creator himself. Also, you know, to make it sure that it's something that would be good. You know what I mean? But I'm perfectly fine with it. Being any, anyways, uh, way back when, if you go and look, you looked into the little uh, communities that that show had, even back in what like the either late two thousands early two, okay, I'm I, I'm gonna get to what I'm talking about now, but how crazy is it that the two thousands is literally twenty years ago? Hmm, how crazy is that? It's been twenty years since the two thousands. 2004, bro, time, 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 this is not the radio mode, but time flies, is all I'm saying, so in that community though, there was uh, an image, right, this little image that kept going around, and it was basically saying that Ed and Ed and is purgatory, s somehow, and that the evidence for this was all the kids that were there, they had been born in different eras, right, so like, I, I don't know the specific... I, I can't remember the specifics, obviously, because... Uh, but I can I can remember because of uh, Eddie's personality, right? He was said to be born or... Well, he lived in the era that was, uh, you know, 50s, 60s, around that time. You know, money was a uh, money was uh, difficult, I guess. And, uh, no, it was Rolf. Rolf, I think. Rolf was said to be the first because of his, uh, you know, his old, old in life. Uh, you know, his way of living, pretty much. And I think the I think the earliest one was someone like Jimmy or something. I don't know. It was crazy theory, and I never liked it because you know I don't want to think that the show that I watch is actually a, a metaphor for death, and that all these kids are not alive in their own little wacky world filled with goofy antics and slapstick comedy with rubber hose power scaling. You know? Of course I don't want to think that back then. And even though that was just me being a kid, I'm even now looking back on it, it was like, why was that a thing? Why was it a Sure, it's a good, I guess, a decent, you know, like something to put together and have to really a little think about. But like at the end of the day, that's not true. And it's not going to be true. And it doesn't make sense. It's not like a metaphor, you know. Uh, certainly, cartoons wouldn't go out of their way, Right? To interpret something like this being done like that. You know, like, sure, it's a theory, all that. But it's not like a theory that could be proven. You know? It's not like a theory that has under-mounting weight of evidence. You know what I mean? So, based on that, right? That was my, pretty much my first example when I come to this. Because everything else, uh, if you look... It's not just like, a, oh, all the characters are dead. It's like, the coma theory for freaking everybody. Like... I rem and this other image that came out you know, around, I don't, I don't know when Adventure Time was particularly released. I don't know. I think it was early twenty ten, twenty tens. Jeez, um, that one was also a popular image. It was like, I don't think you'll ever wake up, and it was just this depressing image of Finn in a hospital bed in a coma with a Jake a dog and his mom next to him, and it was revealed that the entire Adventure Time was a dream. But that which, by the way, is also not true, obviously, depending on how much 
seeing how much lore there is in the Adventure Time, it's like, no, 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 no. Although they do reference it. I think they said, like, what's it? What if the whole world was someone's dream? Crazy of them. Crazy of them. But, that being said, ever since then, I have not been a fan of, uh, this character's are actually dead, a theory, or this character's are in hell, theory, or this character's in a coma, theory, or this is all a dream, theory, because, you know what I mean? Like, it's all, it, it could be interpreted for literally anything. You know? Like, that could, it's not like a theory that holds weight into something in particular to the themes of the show. It's something that's being used to pretty much, like, connect everything to a darker thing. Like, I'm pretty sure, uh, I'm not sure if this was anything in particular, but I did see one post on one time of saying that, uh, in the Owl House, that the demon realm is pretty much like a, it's not a metaphor or anything, but it's like a, a loose word being, you know, for essentially hell. But this was, like, way, way back when it was first started, which was, like, what, 20, 2019, 2017? I don't even know. I wasn't there. I saw I was super late, but it was still super good, and I loved it a lot, and I was sad it ended, but it was a great show. Great show. 100%. But, uh, yeah, I was just talking about whatever that post was, where it said, like, you know, Belos was actually the devil, and he took his mask at the end, and he had, like, a devil fiery face. If he's, you, you've probably seen that. Anyways... My point being, like, I'm not usually the biggest fan of this theory, but I feel like if film theory, uh, Matt Pet here, right next to me, say hi, Matt. I know, I know. Uh, who says, like, hey, this is literally hell? Okay, then, you know what? I think we should hear him out on this. You know what I mean? We should give him two cents, you know? Because, like, you know, he, obviously there's, like, what, 16 minutes and 25, 23 seconds of proof? That he provides. Like, what do they provide on these old posts? They just say, like, hey, these are characters. In well, actually, they did, like... Well, not even that. They just drew the different characters of Ed and Eddie into different uh, fashions. And then saying, this is it from that area. So, that's not even... Uh, hiccup. That's not even, like, a theory theory. Or, like, proof for the theory. That's just, like, them drawing that. But, it's still a good drawing, you know? Like, I'm not... Bashing on your bizarre, and I'm just saying that you know, it's not so much substantial for the the theory, you know, because the end of the day, it's just a theory, a game theory. Thanks for watching with proof. That's what that's what it's all about. Proof. You gotta get the proof in. You need the proof sometimes to get the point across. So, anyways, uh, I guess so. I've talked about this. I'm I'm interested to see what they're gonna what the thing is like I, again i'm not the biggest fan of this but i just see why not you know why not re watch more of these because my pack is great i love his theories well um it's mostly entertaining i guess I, I still hear him out like i will say the one that has the most hold on me for sure like this is probably something that really really did happen is uh not even film theory just specific to game theory is um the rosalina one if you know you know uh, shout out to that video. But again, uh, again, like, uh, go watch Film Theory. Go watch New Mesa Digital Circus. Go watch Film Theory's Theory about the Digital Circus Part 1 and 2. Well, not parts, but the first video that he did, that they did. And then the second video that they did, which I'm watching here. So go watch those two. And then, after you watch those two, go watch mine. My first one about the first theory. And then this one, which is the second one about the second theory. You know? So just make it sure to elaborate. Go watch them. These They're the people who did all the editing, all the research, all that. Go watch them. This is just me reacting to it and appreciating what they've done. So please appreciate them as well. Anyways, I uh, guess that's all I have to talk about. I've rammed on for like nine minutes. So let's get started. This is uh, Film Theory by Jesse. <laughs> literally hell. I probably shouldn't sound so excited, but you know what? It's fine. It's good. Y'all ready to watch it? Awesome. Here we go, play. Well, hello there. Welcome, welcome. Please come in. I know this might not be what you were expecting, but you and I, we're going to go on so many adventures. We're going to have so much fun. 
Did they get his VA for that? Forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. <laughs> well, maybe not. Or maybe yeah. <laughs> what? 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 Who told you to do that? Oh, I, I, I forgot about that. I put the thing. Whenever I don't move my freaking. <sighs> nothing. Nothing. You already know. It's fine. Just ignore it. My bad. Internet, welcome to Film Theory, the show that's here to show you the most jaw-dropping, heart-stopping, mind-bending theories you can imagine. Yes. Just our last theory on the amazing digital circus. The long and short of it is that we believe that the circus here isn't exactly what it appears to be. True. Instead of some futuristic, fully immersive experience, we believe that it's actually a VR video game. Yeah, this is what I like. One that copies the brains of anyone who puts on the headset. And, uh, I also really do like the copy the brain thing on the headset. Like, it's like, you know, it's not like it takes away the experience, I guess, from whoever the humans are. But it does give, like, a new birthing of consciousness, in a way. So, like, you know what I mean? Like, so, like, a part of them is gone and sort of missing their human parts, human self. But it's not literally their human self. You know what I mean? So, like, in a way, it just brings in people and has them feeling, like, these feelings of, like, you know, trapped abandonment, in a sense. And just with no way of really escaping. Until, you know, they probably get used to it and then we have these more adventures. Anyways. Turns that copy into a digital character to go on adventures throughout the circus. Mm -hmm. so the people trapped in this world looking for an exit are not actually people just digital copies of their consciousnesses their personalities yep. that's why we repeatedly see workstations of vr headsets in the first episode but with no one actually wearing the headset i mean it was kind of it was it's not like they're gonna show anybody but the real question would be if they were to show someone like a human human in the show would they be animated or would they be in the live action sense because i mean really this kind of works for well, at least the show's animation it works for it being what it is it's kind of like uh not currently but like how it used to be with fnaf me going back to fnaf how about that um where it used to be like personified as hu irl humans you know like sure we only see the animatronics we only see like dig digital stuff we only see uh posters all that but everything was treated like like it could exist irl you know what i mean like, there's no animated humans, there's no, like, cartoony characters of humans, there's no, like, any of that. Until, of course, Security Breach, which, I don't see, I, I, it never bothered me, really, but, like, you know, until then, at that point, everyone was, like, you know, if, everyone was just on this belief that, well, not belief, but, like, everyone just, was just accepting that, you know, if human ever did show in FNAF, it would be an IRL human in because everything else just looked that realistic. You know what I mean? So, like, that being that, would it, they be human here? Or would they be... I mean, they are human. But would they be live action or would they be cartoony? So, that being related to this, of course. Like, would they be... <clears throat> human or cartoony is what I'm saying. I keep saying that, but I mean to say, would they be live action or animated? I think live action. Because it kind of works, you know what I mean? It works for this, in a sense, but, like, you know, because I feel like, you know, one day, I don't know, whatever, and Pomni somehow manages to leave, or one of them manages to leave, it'll just cut to live action, but, you know, like, depending on how it's done, it could be done really well, otherwise it'll just look like a, something from Cartoon Network. Anyways, I've talked a lot about that, but let's move on. Our theory didn't stop there. We continued by saying that Pomni is either the creator of the game or an employee at the development studio. Yeah, that makes game, that's good. By our mental breakdown when seeing those work desks. And while this is the direction that I still believe the series is headed for, mm. how about we talk about something else? You see, there's nice. so much fun to dig into here with the digital circus. Oh, so yeah. Those initial theories are the ones that I think are the most likely and the most intentional. It starts to stretch a bit further out that some of the truly fun, wacky <laughs> ideas really start to develop. Really? Are they right? Yeah. 
Probably not. Are they interesting and fun? Absolutely. True. Therein lies the beauty of theory crafting. Theory example, crafting. Last time I briefly tossed out a bit of wild speculation that the digital circus may have itself some biblical connections. In I don't remember that. In scene exploring the back rooms of the company who seemingly created the circus, we see the initials C and A painted on the uh. C made me immediately connect things back to our lovable AI ringleader Kane, a guy who's probably the most in control of this entire situation. Yeah. And you tend to see the name Kane partnered with the initial a in any sort of pop cultural reference hmm. the first immediate jump is going to be to the biblical story of Cain and Abel. Abel. Cain and Abel were the children of Adam and Eve, the first humans to ever exist in the Abrahamic religions. At the time I Abraham. wasn't really sure that this was meant to be anything or if it was going to lead anywhere, but the more I sat and thought about it, the more connections that I started to make. Some of those connections were <sighs> admittedly very dumb. For example, huh. in biblical canon, Cain kills Abel and becomes the first murderer. And oh. what does Cain do multiple times throughout the pilot? He pops a bubble for comedic effect. <gasps> you parasites! Cain kills a bubble. A bull. Coincidence? Wow. Absolutely yes. It is single-handedly one of the dumbest things I've ever said in a theory. And I have said a lot of dumb things in theories. But other parallels I remember that was funny. as I was doing this little brain search through the episode again were a lot more compelling. In fact, some connection was so large that I believe I may have just cracked the question of what the digital circus is wide open. Ooh. See, loyal theorists, the amazing digital circus isn't just some mere video game that's trapped these consciousnesses. Yo, look at that. This is like... Okay, it's probably like, you know, I meant to see interpreted as a V or not a VHS, but like Nintendo 64 or whatever thing. But to me, I'm getting the V smile vibe from this. You know what I mean? The V, the, the everyone, you were, you all were there. You all had to have seen it. It's this orange, like little, an orange uh, console, right? It was orange and it had like a little purple screen. And it had this controller that it was basically just a big joystick with buttons all around. It was like a hand pretty much. And it looked freaking cool. It was the coolest thing ever. You you were the coolest person if you had this V smile. You played all these different games. Batman, uh I think there was a there was a an Aladdin game. Uh there was um some other Disney other the Lion King, I think. Stitch, probably perhaps. I don't know. I I, I just remember playing mostly the Aladdin one. But and probably either I'm getting confused with uh the PlayStation version, but Toy Story also. So like, yeah, seeing this thing, it it brings me back to, <laughs> it brings me back to V Smile. I miss V Smile, bro. Two thousand three. If you know, you know. No, something much darker. It's an eternity of torment and torture. Oh. The amazing digital circus is quite literally hell. Put on mm. your headsets and get your randomly generated name. Exit the going in. So the claim that the digital circus is literally hell is a pretty bold one. So yeah. Why would I possibly make it? Well, look at this. At the very end of the pilot, here we're shown all the human characters sitting at a table. Bam, 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 bam. But you notice anything bam, weird bam, about their bam, 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 Of all the ways they could have set up this table, bam, bam, they decided bam, bam, to have bam, bam, every bam. character on just one side. All of them facing the same direction. Out at us, the audience. So this mm. is fiction, it's rarely by mistake. Because this right here, this is a very iconic framing device from one of the most famous paintings ever made. The Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci. Wow. <laughs> Um, I don't know, maybe it was interpreted as, you know, they're kind of like episodes in a way, you know, like, episodes for s somebody, uh, Kane never really elaborates, but like, you know, when they're presented with everyone in one side, facing on, into us, the audience, it's because, you know, we're literally the audience in this world too, you know? Or at least however it's done in this show, I guess. Because like, however it's done in... The canonicity of the Digital Circus show compared to us watching a YouTube video. You know what I mean? <sighs> well, I can't be that like, yo, that's why they're all sitting. Look at, look at, look at his eyes, Kinger's eyes. Why do they look like that? What just said, Gango? She's looking at the turkey. I like her claw, Zuba's claw. Those look good. But yeah, like, you know, maybe they're all lined up like this because we, the audience, are looking at them and not so much uh, a very specific reference to Da Vinci. Um, so what would that... Like, uh, to me, that makes... Like, it, it, it works both ways, I think. Really, I don't think they were doing that unintentionally. 
But I'm just saying that like it, it could be interpreted as both ways. Pros is really just bare feet out all the time. All right, what was it? Okay, uh, here it is. Jeez. The backbone of conspiracy theories and Dan Brown novels for centuries. Dan Brown. Creator of the series and all the other creatives over at Glitch. They're smart people. They wouldn't mm. have this imagery without understanding the historical baggage that comes along with it. And I mean, yeah, that is fair. Having it as a frame there and everyone else just sitting like. Not just the table layout that's worth calling out here. Look at Pomni in the center. The exact position that Jesus is in for the painting. Mm -hmm. Notice the colors of Pomni. Red and blue. Wouldn't it be weird if... Oh, wait, never mind. Jesus is also dressed in red and blue. Oh. The implication of his colors is that the blue represents the divine half of God, heaven. And his red represents the blood, mankind. So in Jesus, you have the mixing of these two elements. But where does the yellow go in? men and said to live as a human. Red plus blue. And in Pomni, we actually have something similar. At least if our earlier theories were correct. A yeah, where does the, the, the yellow go in? And her brown hair. And her rosy red cheeks. And her... Red and blue eyes. I also really like her eye design. It's very, very cool. But yeah, what about the rest of her? Hmm? 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 What about just her hat? Hmm? Do go on. Creator of this game, a god of this world, if you will, now set to live as a part of their own creation. Oh. It's not like religion is completely absent from this world either. Like, oh yeah, they do say god a lot. The fact that god exists in the circus in some form or another. During the first adventure that Keen sets up for Pomni, the Gloink Queen says this, I am Gloink's doom. You'll be Gloink's god well uh, Okay, but I think she, she would just say that just to be, you know, say like extreme, like, you know, like, uh, everything would be Gloink's even god. But she's, you know, more or less effectively Kane in this world. But, you know. But, and also the characters, do, do, they do say oh god a lot, so... You know, does still exist, I guess. What an oddly specific thing to say. Speaking eh. of making oddly specific references that we can build off of, let's talk about abstract. Mm. Of the show, when you obsess over being trapped in the circus and drive yourself crazy looking for a way out, eventually you get to asking what the point of everything is, and you completely lose sight of who you are and why you're even alive. And when you reach your breaking point, something really terrible can happen. This is known as abstraction. Mm -hmm. We see the result of it when we meet Cosmo the Clown, or at least what's left of him. Oh, Cosmo's been abstracted. Last time, I wasn't really sure if we had enough to really make a judgment over what was happening here, but I did find some more information when digging. Wow, look at look at the way Palm News what run, runs here. It's like a little funny effect. Look. <laughs> over what was happening. <laughs> That's so cute. Last time, I wasn't really sure if we had enough to really make a judgment over what was happening here, <laughs> but I did find some more information when digging Goose the works. Goose works his Tumblr. According to her, the Tumblr isn't just going crazy and becoming a big scary monster. Mm. It's definitely part of it for sure, but there is a deeper meaning. Goose works when you abstract, you lose everything about yourself. You're stripped of every single scrap of individuality that you become something unrecognizable. Mm. Abstracted people look the same. This glitchy four-legged monster covered in eyeballs. And perhaps most important abstraction cannot be undone mm. now looking back over the series with this new lens of religious imagery the abstracted start resembling something else something beyond just mom oh, I did it again with my face lens of uh, hold on imagery the abstracted start resembling something else yeah I did notice that <laughs> uh what couple is abstracted he just looks like a big a big horse see what the legs there those are there Eyes all around and no head, but like there's something there, like a big feral creature. That plus like compared to what I've seen, everyone else gets abstracted designs. Kafmo just gets a big, a big horse. Okay, King. It's kind of, kind of creepy there, but yeah, like un undone in a sense that Kane himself cannot undo that, which. I have something to note of that. I don't know if I mentioned this last time, but I like how that, in a way, calls back to what he said earlier with him being one of the few things he cannot control is a person's mind. And because they're abstracted, they lose their mind, he cannot control that. So, you know, he just puts them away. So that that's a, that's a good detail. That's, that's what I really like. So, I'm sorry. <laughs> Pomini's so silly, dude. 
beyond just monsters. They mm. almost look like angels. Huh? Not really angels, more biblically accurate angels. Oh. Which, enough doesn't really come from the Bible. Let me explain. It's kind of confusing. Okay, I've never read the Bible. I wouldn't know. Wait, you're supposed to be talking about? <laughs> We're going to need to meme lore now. But yeah, that is a good point without the eyes around. That's interesting. Oh, I did it again. Which, ironically enough, doesn't really come from the Bible. Let me explain. It's kind of confusing. Three years ago, a meme started spreading across the internet featuring these monstrous multi-eyed creatures mm. who were called biblically accurate angels. Now, you might look yeah, like there wasn't. I remember. I actually remember that too. People were like biblically accurate angels. Things would go really. They don't exactly look like the traditional image of an angel with robes and wings and hair. Like I remember someone. I think it was. I can't even pinpoint what exactly it was, but I'm pretty sure I saw an art at one point saying, "This is what." Angel would look like biblically accurate, and it was just their artwork about it, and it was pretty much what that, what exactly that was. I remember, I was there, I was there, I was there. Oh shoot, I was there. All that, but what they're riffing on here is a very specific part of the Bible, a few chapters in the Book of Ezekiel, where he Ezekiel? describes having visions of winged creatures with four faces, Jeez. some humans, some animals, and these creatures were joined by wheels within wheels with eyes. Mm. Here's the quote. I looked and I saw beside the cherubim four wheels, one beside each of the cherubim. Their entire body. What's a cherubim? Their backs, their hands, and their wings were completely full of eyes, as were their four wheels. Now, for the sake of clarity, the wheels with eyes, or often in both are and aren't considered angels, depending on what documents you're using and how you're classifying things. And again, all mm. of this is based on a few very short lines in a very long, very ancient religious tradition. But that's neither here nor there. The point is that these religious entities are always described as having an abnormal number of eyes all over their bodies, just like the abstracted that we're seeing in digital circuits. Wow, that can't really say anything else. But yeah, like that. I guess that makes sense, you know. Eyes all over their brains, eyes all over them. Them being kind of form, in like, kind of formed in a way that's unrecognizable. The weird descriptions even fit with the name abstraction. These so-called biblically accurate angels are weird, almost completely unrecognizable to humans because we can't comprehend what we're witnessing. Yeah. They're unknowable. In other words, they're abstract. Yeah, that Although is. it's never made clear why these biblical creatures would have so many eyes, one persistent idea is that the design represents God's watchful eye over us. Oh, They're always watching us because God knows all. He sees all. Look again at the digital. Maybe they just want to see all around them, you know, like 360 vision, dog. Eyeball imagery here all throughout this first episode. Eyes are hidden in the intro, they're hidden in paintings, they're hidden in the background. Kane even admits that he wants all the cast to stay in the circus. Hmm. Why to keep my hundreds of all seeing eyes on you? Kane, an omniscient character who knows everything, a god of sorts. Yeah, He's made of basically a mouth and two big old eyes. Oh, mm -hmm. Kane's dialogue through this more religious lens makes this line hit a whole lot different. Elaborate. Like adventure, activity, wonder, danger, horror, pain, hovering, agony, death, 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 angel food cake. Ow. Not only does <laughs> suffering, agony, and <gasps> angel food cake. Hellish, but why angel food cake? Like, why call out that specific type of cake here? Why? We have ourselves a weird connection to angels and religion that comes seemingly out of nowhere. But the most compelling reason for why we can draw parallels between this series and all these religious ideas has to be the way that the creator Gooseworks talks about the digital <laughs> When asked if anyone in the series would be killed, Gooseworks answered that it depends on your definition to kill. Which huh? Is likely okay, that's a little, that's a little worrying. For real. Pointing to the idea I don't want any of them to die. But it's interesting that she makes this distinction. It means that none of these characters can die. So to speak, they're trapped in here forever in eternal torment, just like hell. Gooseworks also talks about how characters deserve to be there, specifically mm. Jack as the one who deserves to be there the most. Ah, oh, well, yeah, he's kind of an a, an a hole, but I don't know. Maybe he was, he was like that so much in his human life that he went and did all that and got himself stuck in the angel circus. Because he was being an a-hole IRL and ended up getting a headset on, then boom, he became a rabbit man in the show. <sighs> Actually, though, yeah, well, couldn't C C Kane make them more bodies? Well, not more bodies, but, like, different bodies. Well, I guess they never really asked, so. Using the phrase, deserves to be there, mm. it's also just 
circus is some place of judgment. I mean, yeah. Either a reward for those who are good or a punishment for those who are evil. Hmm. Considering Gooseworks has a lot of negative things to say about Jack, this ain't your reward day at the spa. Time <laughs> and time again, Gooseworks has gone on the record to say how awful Jax is. According to Gooseworks, Jax is morally the worst character in the show. Mm. So much so that when asked if he was more of a jerk or an anti-hero, she explained that, quote, there's absolutely nothing heroic about Jax. I mean, yeah, that is kind of true. He, at the first sight of abstracted Cawthorn, he kind of bailed and left it to, left that, left Pomni and Ragatha to deal with him. And then when he heard them more, he and uh, other people, Kang, uh, Gangle and Kinger jumped into the the pit full of Gloinks. And even then, when the Kofo came down and beat up uh, Gloink Queen, they, Gloink Queen, they uh, went up the escalator to get away. So, like, yeah, he's kind of... <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. He's kind of a little, you know... He's not sticking around for all that, pretty much. So, that, that makes sense. That makes sense. Those are some pretty strong words for a character that you yourself created. When another fan commented that they hope Jax is going to get worse, Gooseworks said, you're probably going to enjoy some of the things we have planned. Ooh. And already the behavior that we've seen from him throughout the series is pretty awful. He's mean, he trips people, he knocks them over, he steps on one of Gangle's masks without Karen. He yeah. tells that Ragatha's deepest fear is centipedes, and he uses that information to torture her. Mm -hmm. By the way, I may have left something in your room today, so let me know if you find it. Uh, you're not afraid of centipedes, are you? Jax! Jax is clearly <laughs> not a good person. He's a troll. Gooseworks is saying that he deserves to be in the circus more than most. Mm. It clearly implies that we're trapped in hell. Well, it doesn't clearly imply. It just says, like, you know, whoever deserves to be in the digital circus in a sense that it's being... It's not a technical hell, but, like, it's... Like a metaphorical. In a sense, you know? Like, what well, would be the metaphor for hell? Like, yeah, he deserves to be there in a sense that... You know what I mean? So, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's not crystal clear. It can go both ways. Just because they're in hell doesn't I go both ways. mean it has to be your typical fire and brimstone hell. Case in point, one of the most influential depictions of hell comes from a play by French philosopher Jean Pochon. Known as Jean Pochon. No, or translated into English, no exit. In it, mm. three people condemned to hell are brought in the same room and locked inside. But instead of a torture chamber, they just find a comfortably furnished room. That sounds nice. What you'd expect, right? But as these three start talking and getting to know each other, they realize they don't click. They Oof. each other. They push each other's buttons and they twist the knife until Oof. one realizes this is the torture. A famous line from the play reads, Hell is other people. That okay, yeah, that's so that's the worst hell. When you sit in a room and you talk with people and Nothing about them clicks with you. They they are unrelatable and they have nothing to say to you at all. And you just try to keep talking in order to, you know, and try to find ways to relate to them. But it says no, 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 no. And eventually you just get nowhere. So you decide to leave. And go to a... And go to a pizza place afterwards. I don't know. Get ice cream. Something like that. You just, you just decide it's not worth it. And you just go. Anyways, yeah, that's worse. Would you the up other people? That's a that's a very funny image. <laughs> but yeah, like it, uh, people you cannot connect with, that is the worst, for real. Okay, uh, who's there? Sounds exactly like what we see here in the digital circuit. I mean, they're not all. They're not all super super, unrelic, uh, not clicking with one another. There's a few relatable people here and there. Specifically, uh, Ragatha and Gangle. Zubal and Jax are kind of... Well, Zubal's not as much as Neneho as Jax is, but they are similar. And King, uh, Kinger and Gangle are similar in being, you know, a little, uh, the wacky people. And I don't know. We don't know anything about Kofmo, but he was probably, like... He was probably similar to Kinger. <sighs> so yeah, Ragged and Pomni, of course, though. Six people Ship. don't necessarily click with one another. And no matter how polite they are, they all still push each other's buttons. They eh. exploit each other's fears and fake laugh at each other's jokes. But the worst part of all, there's no egg. That is kind of true. The digital room is no escape. But now to the big question. What's the point? It's all interesting for sure. What's the point? All these parallels. 
well, if we can point to all these religious ideas to show what the musical circus is and how they're going to be using it in the story, we can also use them to point to where the story is headed. Mm. So I believe that we can use the religious imagery to get a pretty good There's a map frame. Pomni's story arc. Ooh. You see, Pomni is digital circuses parallel to Jesus Christ. <laughs> I know that sounds insane. A little. Maybe enough from one of those MatPat out of context compilations that I see floating. Oh my god, yes. The connections are there when you actually stop and look at them. I mean, think back to what I pointed out earlier about the Last Supper scene. Yeah. Pomni is framed as the one in the center, exactly where Jesus is sitting in the painting. Her color scheme matches Jesus's. His robes are split between two colors, red and blue, just like Pomni's jester outfit. Yep. Additionally, we have to consider Pomni's hands. Oh, now, yeah. Halfway through the episode when the abstracted Cosmo attacks Ragatha and makes it glitch, Pomni tries to help her and gets her hand glitched in the process. That is this true. This line is actually left unresolved at the end of the episode, with Kane fixing Ragatha, but not Pomni. She keeps the glitching hand a secret. What? It doesn't get. No, it doesn't get secret. It goes away, just like. Just like. Uh, just like Regatha's, right? Hold on. Glitched in the process. This plot line is actually left unresolved at the end of the episode. With yeah, it goes away. Regatha, but not Pomni. She keeps the glitching hand a secret. No, no, no. I don't think she does. Does she? No. Hold on. I'm gonna. This is uh. This is a map pad. This Ruben video now. I'm gonna be the theorist now. I'm pointing at you, my pet, with my finger right next to me. Can you explain to me what you're seeing here that I don't see? Okay, figure out about a pony. Is that a cap to see? Okay, so it says most replayed, so surely other people also notice this and getting this out. Ragatha makes a glitch. Pony tries to help her and gets her hand glitched in the process. This plot line is actually left unresolved at the end of the episode with Kane fixing Ragatha, but not Pomni. No, 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 no. Like, even if you go back and see your hand there, it's not glitching anymore. And I don't think... I don't think they would leave that intentionally undetailed. But hey, it's just a theory. So, you know, not everything is... I'm looking at you, map head. I know what you're saying. Keeps the glitching hand a secret. Nor... Scars on your hand like this usually reference a very specific thing, stigmata. These stigmata. are representative of the wounds that Jesus got when he was being hammered onto the cross. Usually depicted as scars on your hand. Mm. Connect them to Pomni. And if our previous series correct, well, it's not a scar anymore, so but it's fine. The company behind the digital circus. Well, he's the developer of this game. That would make mm. him the creator. And just like Jesus is an aspect of God in many sects of Christianity, that would make Pomni an aspect of a God or creator of this one. Yeah. Like her arc in the very first episode, forget who she is so that the information can be dramatically revealed to her later on it even follows what jesus went through in biblical texts beginning life as a human before having to discover for himself that he is in fact the son of god mm. discovering his purpose to save humanity from themselves and this is why i think we have to care about all this why mm. we started looking at all these religious parallels in the first place if the digital circus is indeed designed to be hell and everyone here is condemned to be there in some way and pomni suddenly comes in as a representative of jesus well she's there to save them to mm. help the other cast members escape from this torment that they found themselves in in pomni's creation but in the cruelest twist of fate saving them is gonna doom pomni so uh. as a betting man i'd say that pomni will be the only one left in the digital circus oh no all the others to escape just like jesus sacrificed himself for humanity pomni is gonna do the same thing here she's gonna get left behind forever tortured by this wacky ai going on his silly adventures but it'll have been worth it because she'll manage to save everyone else but hey, though the cast of the amazing digital circus might be being burned by their experience on the computer, you don't have to be thanks to our sponsor for today's video, Opera. Ah, oh, but not even Opera GX, hold on. Okay, this, uh, I actually do like this. Of her being able to s save everyone, but not herself. Because, like, you know, in a moral questioning... In a moral, like, d debate. Like, would you, shave, would you save one person from the train... Or would you save the three people? And even you say yo, you push the train away. Uh, here it's kind of like it's kind of like that where you know, is it the morally the right thing to do? Should Pomni be the one to sacrifice herself and take take everyone away, or let them free? Which you know, uh, morally in a moral sense, and I keep saying that for some reason. I feel like she would do that. Like, you know, she might be freaking about now and kind of, kind of selfishly, 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 kind of selfishly, 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 
thinking about herself and wanting to escape, she would eventually go to the point where, you know what, maybe it's not so bad if everyone else manages to get out. Because, you know, well, the difference is, you know, this is her one life between one, two, three, four, five. Five lives. Huh. <sighs> Plus, you know, I think they get carried out on the show. Kane and Pomni. Plus all the other AI. Wait. Wait. Is Bubbles an AI? They never elaborate on that. Is Bubbles an AI? They say Kane is. Is Bubbles? Bubbles. Bubbles, where is the frame? Da Vinky. A uh, king kills the bubble. Could be a me. Ow. Do the episode again. My head settled. Look. Ow. Yeah, look at the. Are you, what are you? What are you? Though I guess he kind of says it right here. You parasites. Yep. Yep. So yeah, like is it is it, is it a, a bubble or is it a parasite or whatever is it? Say? What are you? So anyways, uh, I guess that's it for this video. Uh, great video. Uh, interesting stuff, actually. You know, n sure, sure, it's kind of like, you know, not the... It's not... It's metaphorical. It's, it's, it's more metaphorical than I thought it would be, like, literal, in a sense, you know? Because, you know, there's a difference between saying that, okay, they're actually all literally here, and it's literally... Okay, well... Okay, the title is actually a little bit misleading, Mr. Mappa. <laughs> Literally hell. But also, there are a few notes here I have. As you know, the glitching hand thing, it was fixed by the end of the episode. I'm almost very sure. Like, even then, is there... Oh, a comment. Look, a note. Pomni didn't keep the glitchy hand a secret. It was fixed when Grabback came. Or whether it gets fixed... Pomni realized her hand was fixed, too. Thank you, commenter. Uh, at Jessalyn... Krennicky 1431. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What was this? I love how Gooseworks commentates during Glitch X how she's just throwing religious things in to mess with yours, especially calling out Map Pack, then we get this. <laughs> wow, really? That's funny, that's funny. I'm I'm liking that. <laughs> yeah, that makes that's that's a good point. That's a good point. And I mean, you know, at the end of the day, what this is, is just a big goof, a big gaff, a big troll by Gooseworks. Hmm? Hmm? Mad Pat? What'd you say there? Would you say checkpoint? Check... Checkpoints? What am I saying? Checkmate. Dog, I cannot talk today. So, uh, but yeah, this was still a good video. Good, interesting, er, good, inter interesting points, interesting, uh, setup and good proof, I would say. Sure, you know, and a lot of it is going to be used for those map pack out of context compilations. But, you know, like in a story, in a metaphorical story sense, that makes a good, you know, that's a good arc, I should say. Pondy sacrificing herself to save everyone else. And it's not in a literal hell, it's just a metaphorical. So, uh, yeah, that was a, a good, that was a good video. I certainly enjoyed it. I enjoyed listening to his points, and I'm also enjoying having Pomni here. Right next to me. What do you think of the video? Awesome. Mad Pat. What do you... Do you think this is gonna, all going to be true? Or is it not just Gooseworks trolling? Yeah. Yeah. I, f I feel the same way. Also, I need a Pomni plush. I do not have one. It's very sad. This is just... This is a fake on my head. Don't look at it. Don't look at her. I'm sorry. Bye. Okay, uh... So, yeah. I think I talked enough. Uh... Thank you all for watching, of course. This has been my reaction to Film Theories. The Amazing Digital Circus is literally hell. By Mad Pad, by others. Go watch their video first. I'm, 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 I'm stressing this to be very sure. Go watch their video. They make the videos. They're awesome. Go watch them. Then come back. Watch me. Watch them. And then just watch both of us together. That sounds normal. Uh... So, uh, yeah, uh, thank you all for watching. My name is Ande. Please, what do you think of this theory? Is it good? Is it plausible? Is it a little out there? And please let me know in the comments. What is your theory about the Amazing Digital Circus? 
And then after you comment, why don't you like and subscribe for more of these amazing videos. Uh, check out my Twitch. I stream there sometimes with my friends. And check me out on Twitter. I post things about art and food that I find to be very good. Anyways, uh, thank you all for watching. My name is Ande. This has been me reacting to film theory. And I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. No. Wrong, wrong emotes. I do this all the time. Bye-bye. Say bye, guys. They're awesome. They're awesome, aren't they?